And then you'd start looking, everybody made money on 9-11. Everybody, whether they were involved in the plot or not, after the fact, they made so much money that they didn't want to rock the boat. They wouldn't call for investigations. For instance, the insurance companies. Why on earth would an insurance company just simply pay off the 9-11 towers without complaining? If you put a complaint in about your neck, you, they'll send photographers around to catch you playing basketball with your nephew. But the towers, not a single bit of investigation. The only thing they asked was to change the payout amount, not whether or not they were required to pay. And that didn't make any sense until you realize that they raised the rates between 10 and 20 times all across the board. So a building that used, like it's a 30-story building in New York, the a typical insurance was around uh, $100,000 or so for a year. Now it's over a million. So they're making out big time. But this is all, you know, this is just observation of what's going on. We don't know if that's the genuine motivation. That's what a new investigation has to determine. We have another call? Yeah. Go ahead, call. Yeah, hello. Go ahead. Have I got you? Yeah, this is uh, a reverend here in town, and it's good to see your program on the air. The thing that I would like to make is a statement that in the name of terrorism, after this happened, this 9-11 thing, in the name of terrorism, they are removing your freedoms from you, America. Wake up. Don't be sheep led by the wolves. Do something. And Thank God that you had the uh, fortitude to come forward with this, because this has been my thinking also. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Welcome. And... Uh, that reminds me of uh, these books here are all written by David Ray Griffin, who's a the theologian, you know, and they try to discredit the 9-11 movement by saying, well, the guru of the 9-11 movement is a theologian, as if the 9-11 movement was a faith-based movement. But no, it's a fact-based movement. And, uh, well, <laughs> I kind of lost my train of thought, but David Ray Griffin is... Uh, I forgot exactly what I was going to say. I'm sorry. Can you remind me where were we? Okay, next caller. I don't know what happened to that. Are you there? Hello, Bill? Yeah. How you doing? I blew it big time on that explanation. I, I know, and my, my mind went out on me too there, and I didn't want to jump in and interrupt you either. But I, I wanted to, to back you up a little bit on your first call. who asked a very good question, is why, why would our government blow up the towers? And you made some very good points. But I would also encourage the people listening out there who don't understand this to look at governments history of governments is that they become tyrannical and our founders knew that when they created our constitution and every government will eventually feed off of its people and when you look at 9-11 and what came out of it we've gone past the myth of little men of little uh, let's just say brown men you know they, they made it sound like they were brown people were evil living in a cave over in afghanistan running the operations to to putting it on the american people now we're the terrorists and they built a police state out of this and it's getting stronger every day and again that's the history of governments, are to become powerful, they become strong, they take away the people's rights, and the ultimate goal is genocide of populations. And I think I can say that pretty confidently when we look at socialism, communism, Nazism, whatever you want to call it. We hear them saying our government is socialist now. I partially agree with that. Socialism is just bankers taking control. But a government will take absolute control, build a police state, take away the rights of the people, and then they start killing you. I mean, count up the body counts in Russia, Maoist China. Uh, and even uh, the uh, uh, National Socialists. But to understand that, you really need to understand how governments become tyrannical, and they need an event. And nothing like war takes away the people's rights better. And they, they discovered this, the British used this going way back. So you get a war, even a fake war. This is a constitutional Almost war. Almost always a fake war. Correct. And then you ratchet down on the civilian population, on your citizens, if you will. And that's something people need to ask. Why are we being... Uh, basically stripped, have P TSA scumbags put hands down our pants, searching us. We're not the terrorists. Yes, if we the, the people terrorists are the government, came from overseas, supposedly, right? That's what, so right. That's what they tell us. If we the people are the government, then why are we the people suspected of terrorism? And I think yeah. it's pretty clear where they've turned this police state. And I'm like you, Bill. I can't get my thoughts together today, but that's the best I'll do. And I know you have other callers. And uh -huh. good luck and good show and happy new year. Thank you for thanks for calling and. Um, you know, oh, we've got another call. Okay, I'll just go straight to the other call. Hello, caller. Hi. 
Yeah, I have a question. I'll try to answer it. I wasn't doing very good on the other ones, but go ahead. <laughs> well, I was hearing that uh, what they did is they painted the explosives on the girders. Well, I was curious on, like, who who could have had a record on who was, had access to the girders and, like... Uh, well, now that's the type of thing that we need to have the investigation for with, uh, you know, subpoena power and testimony under threat of, you know, penalty of perjury and uh, the ability to offer, you know, some sort of immunity for testimony. And you start with, you know, some known point and just start asking questions. Okay, who told you that? Who told you to do this? Who told, you know, and you go down the line until you find him. And the, that question could be answered probably after a little bit of investigation. We can only speculate right now. So, um, I was also there, so there's nobody that's ever came forward at all, like uh, one of the maintenance guys that may have worked there that might have knew anything, like the gird is being worked on one weekend, or, well, I mean, I don't well, think just anybody could get to him necessarily, could they? I mean, William Rodriguez, the 27-year uh, janitor of the at the site, um, he was responsible for saving a lot of people. He had the only key that opened all the doors, and so he let all, all you know, very lot of survivors, led them to, to uh, safety. And uh, he testified that there were certain floors that were, you know, not occupied, and yet he heard big metal wheel type of heavy objects being wheeled around and bumping around. And uh, when he actually looked inside the room, there wasn't anything going on. But, you know, it's, there, there's stories of uh, elevator renovations that took over six months with technicians and equipment being pulled in and out of the buildings. The buildings were also shut down and rewired for Internet and security reasons just before 9-11 mm -hmm. also. Any of those could have been cover, you know, to let people in. It, it definitely took weeks and weeks to do this, maybe months. So it's a big operation, and it had to be people that could come and go daily without, you know, bringing up. It wasn't Al Qaeda. <laughs> yeah, it couldn't be. I mean, that there would, that would take too many resources and too many, like you know, you'd have to have some some money or something to be able to get access into a building like that. Well, this is more speculation, but uh, well, the fact of the matter was that. Bush had two relatives in the security company that uh, was in charge of the Trade Center, and su surprisingly enough, they were also the security companies for United Airlines and American Airlines, the two airlines that were involved. That's uh, Wart, Wart Walker Jr. and uh, Marvin Bush. Those okay, well, well thanks. And there's so much to look at, you know, just pick a subject and go to the Internet and start looking at it, and uh, pretty soon you become the expert. And there's so much here. I mean, I'm being overwhelmed by all the details. I mean, you can see David Ray Griffin wrote book after book after book after book, and every one of these books is so annotated and and referenced. Let me see if I can... Okay, like this This is a the 9-11... Uh, New Pearl Harbor Revisited. It's the sequen sequel to the original famous book that everybody cut their teeth on. But take a look at this. About a third of the book, if you can see, a third of the fully a third of the book. These these are all the references, and uh, there's an index in the back too. And let me tell you, if you don't have these footnotes and uh, a good index in your book, you can pretty much be sure that it isn't worth using as a re as a research reference. That's just neither here nor there, research techniques. Any other comments? No, that's it. Thanks. You bet. Thank you. Um, do you have that David Ray Griffin, uh, I mean the uh, David Chandler uh, yes. final statement? Okay, let's run that and then we'll take some more calls. All right. Well, this this doesn't take very long. Yeah, go ahead and run it. <laughs> the phones are ringing off the hook. This DVD has focused very much on the physics of 9-11, and basically it's a personal um, statement on my part. This is the angle I come at it because this is who I am and this is what I know. And 
One of the things that amazes me is how I, as uh, simply a high school teacher, have enough, if I actually apply what I know, there's so many things that are so clear about what's happening. There's so many people out there I've talked to that are, that are much more knowledgeable about science either than, even than I am. And the typical result is they never even heard that Building 7 came down. They've never bothered to look at the evidence. And it's like there's, there's a very strong stigma that has officially been placed on this to call it conspiracy theory and to try to stigmatize any, um, any interest in these events. 9-11 really is an event that changed the world, and it's changed everything since then. It hasn't changed our fundamental values, but it's changed the way our government interacts with uh, the people. We have the ongoing wars of 9-11, as some people have put it, and as long as those wars are continuing to be fought, um, there, we can't just let 9-11 get swept under the rug because this is um, where these things come from. Um, we've killed over a million people in Iraq. That's a statistic that the papers don't tell you, but it's been researched multiple times by reliable institutions. Uh, we have killed over a million people in Iraq. It's not just that they have killed each other. Um, this is an atrocity on a huge scale. And this is something that we cannot just let go. Uh, there's so many angles to this. Uh, I've come at it from the point of view of science. There's the political science. There's the sociology. There's the question of how come official science, like the people involved with NIST, uh, have been manipulated the way they have to take good uh, scientists with integrity and be able to use their talents and stamp it with a political agenda. And how, this, how people can allow this to happen with their life's work. Who am I speaking to? I'm speaking to the general public, whoever has enough interest in these events to have watched this video through. But I'm also speaking to people that have backgrounds in science, that if you actually look and ask the questions, the kinds of things I've done. Or if you have expertise in other areas, look into this from your own particular um, perspective. I specifically am encouraging people who are involved in official authoritative science, such as NIST, to evaluate your life's work. Daniel Ellsberg uh, is an example of someone who uh, found it necessary to step outside the norms of what was expected of him in order to uh, have a life that he could, he could live with himself. And I, I really am hoping that um, some of you who are perhaps watching this video, if you have uh, knowledge of what really happened, uh, that you will make yourselves known and share this with the world. This is something that has not been resolved Yes, it's a few years ago, but the wars of 9-11 are continuing, and um, it can't just be swept under the rug. Um, it's too important for that. We need 9-11 truth. Okay, that was the last uh, clip from the 9-11 analysis video. And... Uh, it's available in piecemeal on the internet, and I, I'm going to find out if I can post it to the internet. I've got permission from David Ray Griffin, I mean from David Chandler, I get my Davids mixed up. I got permission to show the video and uh, on my show and also in its entirety. So watch for it on channel 22 here. Now the reason I had him look, do this is, well I'm standing in the way, but Jesse Ventura. That's the one I wanted to show you, right there. Now, that's American Conspiracies is what... Yeah, what you. Oh, I'm standing away from the microphone, sorry. Uh, Jesse Ventura wrote this book called American Conspiracies, and it kind of goes along with his, the show he has called Conspiracy Theories. Now, the first year that he, or the first season, let's say, uh, he, he pulled off all the episodes without a hitch, including the 9-11 one and a Kennedy assassination one and so on um, I think the Kennedy was the first season I'm not I don't remember but anyway the the point is that we got